You're listening to the British Baseball Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, today's guest on the British Baseball Podcast, uh, a man who has had the best seat in the house for nearly a decade, Paul Stoddart. Paul, how are you? Hi, good evening. I'm well. Thank you, Matthew. For those that uh, may may not know you, but think you've had the best seat in the house, uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and and what what is that you do that gives you such a, a great seat? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm Paul. Um, Paul, as I say, Paul Stoddart. I uh, born and raised in in Lincolnshire in England and studied a bit in London and worked there for a while before moving to the Netherlands. Yeah, about 25 years ago. So I'm based here over over the other side of the water at the moment yeah and and through baseball got involved with gb baseball and have been their photographer for since uh, 2016 euros in uh in the netherlands here so and it's been uh, an amazing experience as you say best seat in the house yeah so, it, i mean like, times. <laughs> yeah but people people would definitely be familiar with your work it's it's all over social medias the facebook groups yeah. And uh, we will definitely talk about some of the most iconic shots that you've uh, that you've developed over the years. Yeah. How did you? It's one of the questions I would ask all my guests. Is uh, how did you actually get into baseball? Are you a baseball fan, or did you become a fan because of the well, photography? Well, it, it's kind of, they they kind of came together at the same time, um, or, or photography came through baseball. Um, like I guess, like many people back in back in England or Britain yeah it's it's by chance you 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 get into baseball I, I had no exposure to baseball at all whilst living in England and yeah I remember once being given a, a baseball glove for my cousin when I was when I was very young but it was for the wrong hand so I never really used it but I really sort of like remember you know the physical uh equipment and and, and being excited by that but that was really the only baseball memory I have growing up um, and it wasn't until moving to the Netherlands and my eldest son at the age of five six years old yeah went along to a to a, an open day at a, the, our local club Hofdorp Pioneers they did an open day for schools at the end of that session uh, one of the coaches came and said hey your son he can runs pretty fast he seemed to enjoy the day yeah maybe you're interested in in you know becoming a member and I remember that night we were down the sports shop buying a glove and by Saturday he was uh, playing his first t-ball game and that was pretty much every weekend for the next 12 years <laughs> playing baseball with him so uh, yeah I got in, I got involved through him through uh, baseball so I gave it uh, four seasons for myself I played for a men's team over here yeah so uh, I got I got to know what it was like as well so and the photography side that came well I worked for Canon that's my that's my proper job okay so I've been around photography and photographers through my work there and yeah basically built up my I guess my fog- photography kit around taking photos of, of of my son and his team and then it, and then it all sort of like built when yeah moved moved from there so yeah well they, they came well, together at the same time yeah what an interesting journey into it and I'd be really yeah. interested to know more about how the recruitment drive was. Like your son started playing when he was five. My little boy yeah. um, just started when he was four at Manchester. Yeah. Um, we me and took him along as soon as we could get him into like any of the kids sessions, just so yeah. just so we could enjoy playing and and being around yeah. different sports and and helping with hand eye coordination. Yeah. And that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and do they have a like a, 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 a and do they have like a, a different version of the game like a because I, I certainly remember that as it went through the ages, the rules started to change, or the way they, you know, started with a tee ball, and then mm. then it was a pitch coach, and then it was a, you know, a, a, a player pitching. So it kind of like graduated up the as you went through the ages. So. Yeah, well, he's he's only five mm-hmm. now, so we've yeah. only got like a, a, okay. a less than a years with experience. He's not him, pitching yet. No, yeah. no, not yet. But he, he, funny enough, he does pitch. Uh, he was yeah. taught by uh, John Eaton down at Manchester, like how to hold the ball and how to throw properly. Yeah. Yeah. And when he gets his socks, he he pitches into the wash basket. Yeah, Even if you just say just throw it in there, he just automatically does it and does the follow yeah. through. Yeah. yeah, I mean the youth, 
the youth program here in the Netherlands is 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 amazing. It's, it's never have to travel more than twenty minutes to a game, you know, at any age group, you know, and you're and you're playing six or seven teams in that league um, through the whole summer. It's 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 not the whole of the Netherlands. It's this particular area where I live, where where baseball is very popular, and there's yeah. lots of fields and lots of facilities and lots of clubs, and it's yeah, it was by chance that sort of uh, I got involved through uh, through Oscar. Yeah. So whereabouts in the Netherlands are you based? Then do you mind me asking? I'm uh, northwest, so I'm near near Amsterdam. So it's about twenty minutes from Amsterdam. Yeah. My home club is uh, Hoofddorp Pioneers. Maybe people know it because of it, it's where the uh, yeah big MLB stadium was built before the days of London series. There was talk of MLB coming to coming to Europe, so the MLB invested fair bit of money building this facility and it's it's at my home club here in the town Hofdorp. nice and uh, it's, it's an amazing venue yeah 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 that's really good how would you rank then baseball amongst popularity in the netherlands because we all know how powerful the the national team is um, like you say it's quite a popular sport you've got quite yeah. a lot of fields like so yeah. like over in britain it's 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 football 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 rugby gets a look yeah, every I'd, now and then and then it's i'd say it probably goes Football, hockey, darts, <laughs> and then and then baseball, maybe maybe five or six. Uh, yeah, that's cool. So, but yeah, it's certainly as I say in, in this area, it's it's one of the sports you can easily pick up and have exposure to. Yeah. Apart from baseball, are there any other sports that you enjoy, um, or any other things that you like um, taking photos of? It was it was all baseball, baseball, baseball. But then, kind of, as I as I started to get a bit more experience and confidence and and kind of bit better quality kit and, and images, that led to uh, music photography um, because you need a similar similar kind of equipment. It's all low light, you know, high speed gear. So I volunteer for my local music venue. Yeah, six or seven of us on the on the roster, and we get a couple of couple of gigs every month so that was kind of like probably my next kind of thing I did after baseball and then I'm also involved in a rugby club here so I do a lot of rugby photography and just kind of like the, doing those things has opened doors to many many other sports and I actually offer a service to for so like parents you know how, how you want to send photos to your grandparents of, of kind of maybe do a, a portrait in a studio or you send them their school photos with their uniform on. Well, I kind of offer a service where you can hire me to come and take photos of your child playing a game of football, you know, or, or doing a sport they love and create a nice gallery okay. of images that you can then sort of like um, supply and use. And that's, yeah, as I say, it's opened up doors. I've done kite surfing, base, uh, basketball, football my latest one actually it's not through that service it's a different thing but is um uh wrestling the uh, <laughs> the, the pro wrestling federation of holland or pwh they call it um yeah through through a, a contact at, at the music venue i've uh yeah i now do these photo uh, photography at the the wrestling tournaments and that that's i love it it's my new favorite <laughs> my new favorite sport my new favorite subject because it's 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 all action. It's entertainment. There's good light. There's good backgrounds. It's kind of great for photography, and it, and it, and it's a fun night out. So yeah. and a really good, nice group of people to work with. So yeah, yeah I've I've really proud of some of the images I've I've shot for the wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, I, I am a fan. I was I won't lie. I am a fan of professional wrestling. Yeah, I've been to a lot of indie shows. Yeah. Been to some of the live ones as well. The big ones. There's like a WWE event few years yeah. ago just before lockdown we were like six rows from the front and I'm, I'm not bashing or nothing but i didn't enjoy it that much and i've been to smaller more intimate things and just been mind yeah. blown the first time i went i've never never seen anything like it before and all of a sudden there's like this whole theater production going on and, and yeah. kind of yeah, just uh, I, I got I got hit a few times because you know you? you need to be sport and, and know to where to stand and where not to stand. So uh, yeah, when people are flying out the ring on top of you, it's uh, <laughs> yeah you have to be careful. Yeah, definitely. So how did you become the GB photographer? 
Yeah, th- through, through through Oscar, my son, really, because yeah, when when he was maybe thirteen, fourteen, we went over to to England to see you know what what the level was like to see whether he could make the GB team at under 15s which which he did and and uh, yeah Liam Liam Carroll's coach at the time yeah so that's how, that's how I got involved with with um, GB so with under 15s under 18s with with Will um yeah I played did a few tournaments there and obviously I took I took photos for the benefit of the, the parents and and the, you know the the other people who were attending those tournaments but it became a bit more serious when the senior team came over to the Netherlands to do the the, the European Championships, yeah, 2016. And by then, I got to know Liam. I got to know Liam was a, the head coach of the seniors by then, and I got to know Glenn, Glenn Robertson, quite well. So when I knew they were coming from Netherlands, I offered to help out with some of the operations stuff. I managed to find hotel. Um, yeah, the field, a field for training, I've arranged a few kind of um, warm up games for the team, and yeah, then when when the game started, I, I had all my all my kit. I got my first kind of press credentials um, to be able to do the photography, and it yeah, it really really went from there. Um, amazing, uh, it was an amazing experience, you know, to be kind of in amongst that group of you know talented coaches and, and athletes and, and being part of that and you know helping out wherever I could and and taking taking photos as well so that that's kind of yeah my uh my in, intro to GB baseball <laughs> yeah yeah that's really good does uh your son still play now um no he, he he's he's stopped playing now um and so I, I've kind of like carried on and I'm you know happy that uh you know that it hasn't hasn't my ties with GB didn't stop with him. I've I've, yeah. been, able to, I've been able to create my own, yeah, because um, yeah, it's a, it's a great program and it's a great group of people to work with. So yeah, so the people I spoke to in the program, nothing but love for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's some really really nice nice. Uh, every everyone's everyone's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you going to Arizona? I am. Yeah, I made the team. <laughs> <laughs> No, because it's 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 yeah. The higher the higher up you go in in these tournaments, the, the stricter it is. Um, I've done both the, the the two qualifiers, so the one in Brooklyn and um, yeah, obviously Regensburg. Um, actually, the Brooklyn one um, was was like the week after the Euros here in in the Netherlands, and and all the staff left the Netherlands to go to New York, and um, uh, some of the players too, and. Uh, yeah, when I saw kind of the first social media post from the team over in New York, I just called Liam and said, look, Liam, I, I want to be there. Is If I can get myself there, can I help in any way? And he just said, yeah, do it. Get on a plane. So the next day I cashed in a load of AMRs, got on a plane to New York. And literally, I remember driving up in the taxi, picking up my creds, walking into the stadium as the GB National Anthem was playing. And it was just an amazing experience and that whole week in new york was probably my highlight of of gb yeah at, at that point yeah it was it was it was it was amazing yeah how do, how does it work with yourself I, I'm, I'm guessing you you're familiar with andy brown uh, the artist he do, do you yeah. both get yeah. I've, I've been uh, with him a few times are you sorry did, did you get uh, yeah, like free reign put or? me and andy together in in the hotel rooms i think because we're both creatives so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, key creative yeah. sorts together. Do you get free reign of of the of the facilities? You like, you allowed? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like I say, you know, the higher up you get, you you go. Um, in terms of tournament tournament importance, the, the stricter it gets. And um, I've I've been able, lucky enough to to be able to get MLB kind of like breast accreditation, and that gives good access. Um, so you can go to where the photographers can go. You can go on the field. You can pretty much walk around the stadium, go anywhere you like. But you're not allowed anywhere near the team. That's that's a strange thing. You, you're not allowed in the dugout. You can't go in the changing room. They they don't mix press and uh, players together, huh. and it and it's really tight tight security. So Phoenix will be different because I, I am actually on the on the the the, the, the on the staff. So I, I need to kind of somehow have. Both a, a, a 
passes to get me where photographers can go, but also yeah. passes where the team can go. So, so I've got jobs for the team too. You, you mentioned before you work for Canon. I'm guessing that yeah. you have to use Canon cameras. Oh, well, I don't have to. I choose to. They're good cameras. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, it's it's also driven by the, the cost. I get, I get a really nice discount. So yeah. uh, I can, I, yeah, I, I, I've built up obviously Canon kit. I've worked there 25 years. So I've built up a good network of contacts. So when I want to borrow some kit, I can I can do that too. So I actually, I, I, for for Phoenix, I've, I've borrowed this huge lens. It's it's like a I don't know how how techy I should get, but it's a, a four hundred millimeter lens, really heavy. So I, I took it out this weekend to practice at a at a rugby game, and uh, yeah, I, I don't need to go to the gym today. It's 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 huge. <laughs> so what what other gear do you use? And be as nerdy as you want to. Talk talk tech. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a good selection of lenses. The body, the body, I, I haven't really changed too much. I'm now on a if we can talk tech, I'm now on a mirrorless. Uh, I use a mirrorless, two mirrorless bodies. Um I've gone for the Canon R6 for those who 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 are Canon shooters. And uh yeah, lenses wise, it's 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 all about getting the the, the yeah the the, the 2.8, what we call the 2.8 aperture. So it lets in lots and lots of light. Because the thing with yeah, any sport is is you have to shoot fast shutter speeds, otherwise everything's blurry. In order to have a fast shutter, you have to let in lots and lots of light. So you need, do need these kind of, yeah, sort of like really quite expensive lenses to, to be able to achieve those images. Not that you can't take nice photos without that, you, you still can. I mean, a lot of the what makes a good image is more about the composition and the background and the light rather than necessarily the equipment. So it does make it a little bit easier. Have you got any tips for those that uh, would be interested in sports photography or that are looking to start in sports photography? First, find find your inspiration from from just yeah keep keep a gallery of images that you like. Just just take them from the internet, keep them in a folder, to, and understand why you like that image. Is it is it the background? Is it the light? Is it the kind of like the, the position? Um, and then you don't you don't need to be a kind of a Premier League or MLB to try and reproduce that image you can you can be any standard of sport on I mean, sport sport um so uh yeah and, and then it's just go out and try and practice and aim to take one better shot every time you go out just get a little bit better every every time you go out that's, oh, that's what i try and do yeah. yeah so what in your opinion makes a, a great shot the, the the best bit of advice i was given was background and light and be creative with both or consider both and if you if you can get both right in an image then it's stunning because yeah people people can look at a good image and they might not understand why it's good and it's generally because the background is clean or the background has some context to it there's a great there's a there's a shot of uh harry ford's home run uh, i think it was in the second game yeah it would have been the second game what makes it is it's not necessarily the the ball coming off the bat. It's in the background. There's all the flags who are participating in the WBC flying perfectly, showing the colours. And then there's a big logo, World Baseball Classic. So if you look at the entire image, you've got the action. At this tournament, the image says World Baseball Classic. And here are all the countries that were playing. Everything is in context and that's because the, the background is telling the story as well as as, as the subject so yeah, uh, yeah that, that's that's key so it's considered backgrounds if you can't get something at least keep it clean and then yeah the other one is, is lighting you know look look for that kind of like a bit of sunlight peeking through some shadows or something capture the face when it hits that or yeah be as creative as possible with with light yeah that was yeah. the best advice i was given with your limited access then in a baseball field or a sporting environment, where do you think is the best place for you to be positioned when you're when you're doing your shots? Well, I guess there's, there's different types of shots. You, obviously, if you're if you're going for action, then yeah, most 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 hitters are right-handed, so you want to be on the on the right-hand dugout. Isn't that is that that's normally uh, the home team? Is it <laughs> the home team dugout point, pointing towards? Because uh, for for a right-handed hitter. Same with pitchers the other way, so you're getting them opening up. Having a good view into second base, 
there's normally some action there. If, you, if you're following the game, you understand what's going and you've got a runner on first and you know you're, you know, get, get in position to try and get a, a slide in at, at, um, um, at, at second base. But it's not all about action. You know, it's, 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 it's also, and probably it comes back to one of the tips as well, don't just go for action, go for reaction as well. Um, you know, have your have a think of how how are the dugout going to react if they, if this play is made? How's the pitcher going to react if he if he strikes out here? Because that is often the better shot than you know the the ball pat going over home plate. The the pitcher's reaction to that strikeout is going to be a far more impactful image. Um, same for you know if you if you focus on people on the dugout getting their reactions. So. Um, yeah, it depends what you're after, whether you're after reaction or or the action itself. Perfect. Yeah. Have you ever been inspired by yeah. um, any real life situation that you've you've felt photographed? There's certainly other photographers that inspire me, and certainly within the European baseball community. I mean, I love what the Czechs do. The Czechs have a seem to have a whole team of people behind them creating content and really high quality stuff. And uh, yeah, so. And then there's another a guy for the, who does for the Dutch team, Louis J. His name is. They they create some really, really nice um, content, um, which kind of gives me inspiration, and I try and up my game to to yeah for, for, to try and get similar content for GB. Yeah, lovely. Um, when you're out on a shoot, is there anything that you would class as essential items that's not really a camera or or a lens? Um, it's not baseball, but for my kite surfing, and this was another tip I got from someone at work who who services lenses and cameras for professionals, and he said he said that the, the way that war photographers, uh, well, basically the story was I went and did some kite surfing photography at the beach. And my lens was completely kind of covered in sand. And every time I turned it, it was kind of like I could hear it grating. So I thought I'd really damaged it. But anyway, this this guy at work helped me clean that camera up. Um, and then he gave me a bit of advice. He said, all war photographers would do this, but they put a condom over their lens to stop sand and dirt getting inside getting inside it. Obviously not over the front, but <laughs> along, the, along the side. You have to cut the end off. And then... And then use use a condom to protect the uh, the outside of the lens. That that's uh, that's a useful bit of equipment to have in your bag. Yeah, sa safety a, first. But baseball wise, what what do I take? I I carry a, I carry a GB flag at all times um, because maybe I just want to kind of put that in the foreground. So I kind of like drape the flag over something, step back, and try and capture a bit of the red, white, and blue. That's something I always carry just in case it, it helps create uh, some context to the image. Yeah, Interesting. Nice one. Um, is there any photography gear that you've purchased or acquired over time that you wish you hadn't? I've, I've, I've always bought way too much stuff. Len lenses, I, I, yeah, I can, I guess because I, 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 um, I'm in this fortunate position that certainly I can buy things cheaper through through my work. So I've certainly bought lenses I thought I needed and then I haven't and then I've been able to to sell them on pretty pretty quickly. So at the moment I yeah I did buy just recently I bought I've been trying to figure out how I carry three cameras in Phoenix. So I've been trying a few kind of like belts and straps and various things to to be able to carry two or three cameras around with me. Um yeah and and the first one I tried didn't didn't yeah, didn't didn't balance correctly. It didn't feel right. So that's uh, that's in the cover. It won't be coming out again. Question came in from uh, from a fellow called Paul. You might know him. Uh, what what's it like shooting with accreditation at an event, and how do you get those images out on social media so quickly? Like I say, with with the um, get, getting a uh, proper accreditation, absolutely uh, uh, absolutely helps. Um, Gives you access to to all the areas you need to. Um, Did you have to apply for that yourself, or sorry? is that arranged for you? I, I don't know how MLB kind of like figure figure it out for these events, but I've I'm kind of like introduced by by the GB program. So yeah, you know that either the press, whoever's press officer for the tournament, or Glenn 
um, will contact the right people and say, uh, yeah, this is our photographer, he needs, he needs accreditation. They have a really nice portal. It's actually on there today, applying for um, accreditation for the two, the two games um, that we're playing uh, in the warm-up against the Brewers and Kansas. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know whether I needed a separate pass because it's a different stadium. So I, I've, I've had it's a really nice portal that you can I can go to and just say I need access to this, this, and this. So that's cool. And yeah. so how is it like? Um, I'm guessing that you've you've not got the world's most magnificent smartphone when you're getting these images onto to social media for me. Oh events. yeah, yeah. So that, oh yeah, that was the second part. Yeah. So um, yeah, g- generally kind of. Um, Someone will be in the team will be assigned to posting on Twitter. So we've through in the in-game. Well, firstly, we, we have a bit of a content plan before we start. What we're going to post before, what we're going to post after, what we're going to post post in-game, and generally someone's assigned to update in the GB account with uh, uh, yeah an update after every innings or something. And if something happened, I'll send a quick text to whoever's running the account. Say, yep, yeah, got that, um, and then my phone connects to my camera um, so I can pull off the image I want, do a quick crop and edit, and then send it over to that person, WhatsApp or something, and then then it's posted on Twitter. Oh, wow. It's too much for me to try and tweet and take photos. So I can just yeah, offload that image to whoever's running the Twitter account that day. Yeah. That's really fancy. There's probably a lot of yeah. people out there that are really into cameras and stuff that already know this. Um, like, yeah. I am I'm well, not a photographer yeah. Yeah. at all. Um, so I, I found that fascinating because I was I was actually really curious as to how you could do it. Like, it was like a Wi-Fi thing to, like... Well, they, they are. I mean, I mean yeah, stuff, you, right? you can do it that way. I mean, I the, the Getty photographers that, that are there at the big events, they they have absolutely everything uploading instantly to to a server somewhere and then someone else has complete control over kind of editing and and distributing that image to any any outlets so and the, the photographer doesn't even get involved yeah they, they just immediately go directly from camera as he's taking them so we we don't have that need at the moment those cameras sound cheap yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a gadget that that you need to to add on maybe maybe I'll add that to my list at some point <laughs> yeah Paul I've got a couple of photos that I want to show you and I want to see if you can tell me a bit more about the photo and this is going to make fantastic audio for a podcast but not those that are watching <laughs> on YouTube okay. who have any issues but We'll try and describe the image and what we can see. And even tell us a bit about the photo and the stories yeah. that surround them. It's going to be like listening to snooker on the radio. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Uh, what's this image? We've got, uh, it looks like a catcher for Great Britain this, who's flying through is... the air to t- tag somebody out. Okay. Okay. This is one of my favorite. This is actually, I have to be fair, this is Glenn Robertson's favorite image. Uh, anyone who's been involved with British baseball, certainly GB baseball, knows Glenn Robertson. And Glenn absolutely loves this photo. Glenn and I, we we kind of, as I say, worked together because alongside the photography, I, I do support Glenn with a lot of operation stuff, be it collecting players from the airport, organising restaurants, buying sandwiches. Um, and uh, one of our jobs is to do the laundry every night. Um, because every 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 day, you know, the, the kit gets dirty. It needs to be nice and clean the next day. And pretty much we will always find the local laundrette and next door will be a bar or something. And almost without fail, every time we're having a drink, Glenn will ask me, do you get any nice shots today, Paul? Any as good as Brett Rosen's catch? Uh, catching? And he just talks about this image the whole time. It's his favourite. So I um, I included this in the pack um uh yeah to uh to, to honor glenn and his uh contribution because like i say it's his favorite it was against the dutch at the the euro 26 at the yeah the 2016 euros it was a yeah i think it was a sack fly to right field conrad cornell absolute cannon into into home plate where brett um whose birthday is today actually i saw on facebook Tagged out or didn't tag out? I don't know. I can't remember what happened. I'm sure someone in the comments will remember this play. I'm sure Glenn does. I'm sure Liam does, whether it was out, in or out. But um, 
uh, I just remember kind of swinging around and getting this shot. And image wise, it's it's dog shy. I mean, it's it's kind of really low quality because um, this was my first game I had photographed with um, under the lights, under floodlights, and yeah. uh, within ten minutes, I was like, "Whoa, this camera can't doesn't work here. This lens isn't good enough here. I'm going to struggle." Yeah, it was it was very difficult shooting without the right equipment, but it tells the story and Glenn likes it. And if Glenn's happy, I'm happy. So yeah, it's a lovely shot. This one's one of my favorites. This is from yeah. uh, the recent women's Euros, the GB women's yeah, national is, team yeah. in the French. Heat. Yeah, this is in Montpellier. Um, last summer it was it was a really busy summer for GB. We had under 15s, we had under 18s, potentially two under 18s, which it did turn out to be two. They qualified, they, so they had two tournaments. We had the women's first ever kind of Euros, and then we had the World Baseball Classic. So, you know, we were thinking, you know, what 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 did we want to cover? And, and certainly Drew and I were very kind of keen on, on being there to be able to tell this story, the story of the, the women's first European Championships and probably one of my best base gb baseball experiences there there was such a such a great tournament for the girls really really emotional i mean i was i don't want to say i had a, I, had a, I had tears in my eyes taking some of those final shots on the on the final day after after that game against the french was it yeah french mm. i think um and this was just i think this was just before the game started although i'm now doubting it because they've all got dirty trousers um, but maybe they had an aggressive warm up, or they didn't do laundry the night before, like Glenn and I. But um, I think it was just before they went out to play that game, and it and it kind of did sum up the, you know, the energy that yeah. that um, that the whole squad had had through that. And I think you you all saw that in the, on the on the live stream. Yeah, it's oh, like yeah, a nice yeah. touching moment with. Uh, I'm going with Jonathan Crammon on one of the, is it the under 18s um, Yeah. You uh, reckon I don't I don't know what club you 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 play for, but it's yeah you're right it's 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 Kramen and uh, Aiden Pierce yeah um, this was in Sweden at the under 18s and uh, the guys had just uh, yeah they they were just been eliminated I think it wasn't the final but it was it was to progress to the final game against the Swedes in Sweden. And uh, yeah, it's it's a real tough it's a real tough moment. I mean, the under the under eighteens it's a tough age because it, within GB the, the next age group is under twenty three, so it's it's quite a big gap between eighteen and twenty three. So the reality is it's it's it is the last time a lot of these players will play for GB. Um, certainly was the case for my son, and I have a really nice shot of him folding up the flag looking in out into the field and I'm you know it's, it, that's a nice photo for me personally I'm thinking that he's memorizing or reminiscing over all the years of baseball that we've had together and this is his last one he was probably thinking what, what's for dinner tonight but uh it, it was a nice shot but this shot yeah of Cramer and, and and Aiden sort of like having having their moment I think they play together at the Mets and obviously have a great connection and this Aiden wasn't the only player that that uh, Jonathan was was consoling that that night. It was uh, yeah, it was um, yeah, quite quite emotional. And I have a similar photo in Italy um, after the game against with the seniors after a game against the Dutch, which we were so close to beating them. Mm. Uh, really, we've never we've never come that close to beating the Dutch. But yeah, it was it, that was our game to take. We could have we could have nicked that win. And I've got a similar photo of JC in the outfield looking down and sad and the flags in the background. And uh, so when we arrived in, in Germany at Regensburg for the qualifiers, says, uh, come on, mate, this time I want a nice shot of you happy at the end of this tournament. I've got too many images of you <laughs> looking down and depressed. I want a really, a really positive image. Um, so... Uh, it was. I had my eye on him at the end of the game when we when we qualified to see where he was. So I says, "All right, I've, I've got to get a, I've got to get an image of him." And uh, yeah, I managed to get one of him hugging Drew 
I mean, tears all down his face. So I got him crying, but at least they were happy tears. Another, another, another emotion one. And, and this, is what I, this is what I was saying earlier about the photos that people remember and talk to me about, apart from Glenn's favourite, most people remember kind of like these reaction or emotion ones. So, you know, consider that when, when in, in, if you are a, a photographer. And yeah, so this one, um, as you say, it's not baseball, it's, it's softball. The, the girls were over here. Um, this is for the Olympic qualifier. And uh, they got through to the final, you know, everything, winner takes all. Everyone, you know, playing for a place in the Olympics in Tokyo. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, the game didn't go GB's way. And, uh, again, lots of emotion. There's a whole gallery of players being consoled by family and, and consoling each other. And um, I just packed up and I was ready to go back to the media area. And I saw Amy, Amy's the catcher with her partner here, tucked behind the dugout. And I ducked down, took this image. And to me, because they were hidden away, it was so personal, I never shared it. I sent it directly to Amy. I said, this is your photo. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to share it. Um, and she really thanked me for it. Um, and since we've talked about it and she's posted this image herself and shared it. So I now feel comfortable sharing it with others. Um, but it was such a personal moment for them. Yeah, there is a backstory that, you know, but it's uh, around how, how difficult it was for them to make this trip and they made it. And uh, yeah, you can you can see the disappointment in, in them that, uh, yeah, they, Tokyo wasn't for them this time around but maybe they get another shot. Yeah. And finally, I think we all know what's coming next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony Seymour and that flag. Yeah, the planting of the flag. Yeah. I mean, it's um, probably the most the iconic series. shots in all of, of British baseball, at least of recent memory. Yeah, 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 you're, you're right. It was kind of, no one knew he was going to do that. And... Yeah, I'm I'm glad I, I got a few. There's a few different ones in this series that I've got in this burst, we call it. And uh and there's actually the, there's a video of me. I think someone took it from the from the crowd, someone who was in there that I've seen it on social media. And if, if you watch carefully, you can see me struggling and banging my camera. And as I say, I've worked for Canon for 25 years. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna criticize the equipment, but and it's never let me down, but in that moment as Anthony was running towards home plate, my camera stopped working. It was literally, oh, no. I don't know what was going on, but I think it was the grip, the battery wasn't connecting. And I was like banging it and shaking it. And you can see this on the video. And in, in the end, I just put it down on the floor. And luckily I had my other camera with me and I switched to that one and got these shots. And actually in hindsight, it was a, uh, the, the baseball photography gods were looking down on me because getting a wide angle shot compared to what I would have got with my other camera, it would have been a tight headshot of him. You know, the the wide angle made it a much, much better photo. So, there you go. Yes. Baseball gods do exist. on my side that day. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, it just, I find it really weird that, that these photos that we all now have seen and loved are, are just like may, may not have happened. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. It could have, it could have, uh, yeah, it could have, it could have gone, and no one really mentioned it or talked about it. But I think because there, there are images there. You know, it does, like you say, it becomes the moment becomes iconic, and it, not not to say that the the photograph the photography is any way special or 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 great. It's just it it it's captured it. It's it's recorded it for forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise it just would have been a memory for those people who were there at the time. So amazing. Yeah. I think we've got one more. Well, yeah. Paul, talk dirt to yeah. me. <laughs> talk dirt to me. Okay. Um, this is this you is how we, we dirt. Yeah. I collect dirt. <laughs> we started, it didn't start at the beginning. It's not like day one. I thought, oh, let's let's start collecting baseball dirt. I don't know when I when I started doing it, it was probably around 2016 when I started with the, the seniors. Um, but yeah, I just I just you know this whole GB experience has been so important to me that I just needed to remember it in some way. So yeah, I just started collecting pockets of dirt and 
keeping them all and tracking them all and yeah people people do it when they go on summer holidays don't they they collect sand from beaches and things but i'm collecting um baseball dirt from diamonds <laughs> around the world yeah which which is your favorite one i think fenway park was fun getting that was uh I, i've got i've got fenway the boston red sox i've got fenway park i went there for a, a work event and bought some tickets to the yeah it was i think it was yankees red sox game and uh, I just sat there the whole game thinking, how am I going to get this dirt? How am I going to do it? And uh, in the left field, uh, there was a there was a ball girl um, in left field. Yeah, you know the girls who kind of or the yeah, they, they they get the the the, the um, foul balls. So I, I made my way down to where we are and I and I tucked myself down behind the barrier and I said, look. And I showed her, I showed her my phone, and I showed her all that my collection of dirt. And I said, can you can you just reach down and grab me some dirt from the ground there? She said, uh, I said, oh, I'd love to, but no, all the cameras are on me. They'll see it, and then I'll be all over social media, and I'll lose my job. And I was like, yeah, okay, I understand. So I waited to the end of the game, and then I went to one of the dugouts and put on my best British accent. And this lovely security guard, she helped me out. She got filled my pot with dirt for me. So I managed to get Fenway Park, not from the field, from the from the from the bullpen, but. Um, yeah it's yeah it's it's still a nice memory and uh yeah some have had to go back and get retrospectively because i i they were important to me before i started the collection i didn't get them uh one was serbia we had a game in belgrade gb 15s and uh yeah that was before i i, I started the collection so i had a colleague from from serbia and she was going on holiday to see her family in belgrade and i said while you're there, can you go and get me a pot of dirt from the baseball field? And she was like, baseball field? And she'd lived there all her life and never knew that there was this baseball field in the middle of a park. And uh, yeah, so she um, she managed to to get that for me. So I've got I've got cut now in, I think anyone in, in British baseball who, who has youth probably know that Little League, everyone plays in the Little League to try and get to the, to the European Championships in, in Poland at cut now. So uh, yeah, so if any of your if any of your listeners manage to make it to the little league European series to cut no, then uh, there's a there's a beer in it for you if you can bring me some dirt back. Yeah, get a pocket full of gravel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what what's what's the most extreme lens you've gone to to get some dirt? I can't believe I've got more questions about dirt than I've about GB baseball. <laughs> well Pram and helped me out with the London series actually, because uh yeah, he he was on the field crew um, with with the under 18s team. They, they the under 18s GB guys were the uh, were the ground crew for the for the London series. Um, so at, at the end of the game on Sunday, um, I went down and sort of like called him over. And I didn't really know him at that point. I don't know if I'd ever met him at that point. We uh, we were about to go and on to I think it was Italy together. Mm. Um, no, yeah, Italy I think, but. Yes. Um, so I passed him my pot and he went to the senior ground guy from MLB and said, oh, can I, can I fill this pot with dirt as a souvenir? So, so he, he was the hero that day because he got me the dirt from the London series. So you don't, you don't take out with the MLB. You don't take chances. You, you ask permission for everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That comes to the end of my questions, but I do have some listener questions that have come through. Tyler Cote has asked, how much is fair compensation for someone to photograph one half of a double header? What can British one baseball clubs double. do to make photography game to make photographing games easier or higher quality? Well, how much how much to pay for a photographer? My my advice is that don't pay anyone until you're confident you you know what they're going to deliver. You know, if you if you're hiring a local wedding photographer or a or a portrait photographer and they turn up at a baseball field i would <laughs> i would first let someone prove themselves as a, as a sports photographer because it is a bit of a different beast just like i can't i can't do portrait photography or wedding photography to be honest in my experience with sports photography and club photography it's most of it's voluntary anyway i'm i'm a volunteer like all the staff on gb you know we, we just volunteer our time so that I would have thought that's how most photographers are about that, that you've got a, you've got an enthusiastic member in the club who wants to develop their skills and and yeah uh, 
I mean, I, in defense of photographers, yeah, equipment is very expensive and it takes a lot of time. You know, I don't know how much a double header is, maybe three hours, but you've got an hour on either side travel and then a three hour game, you've probably got three hours of editing. So, you know, that that is a fair chunk of time. So if you even if you're going on minimum wage, it's it's you're up to a uh, hundred pounds and then you're going to add a kind of like a yeah what do you call it an expertise levy on top of that so mm -hmm. it could get expensive but i don't know is it is that the right investment i mean if you if you're creating images in order to create marketing material to try and attract new members to the club or to um yeah to to advertise a yeah some kind of fundraising event then then yeah it's probably worth an investment but um yeah i don't know it's a difficult question to answer i know how much i would charge <laughs> Yeah, I'll ask. What was, I'll ask other, what was the other part to the question um, about? What can British clubs do to make photographing games easier? Um, We've already talked about the high quality and, and stuff before. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, a kit, kit is easier. I mean, creating a community of, of photographers within British baseball. And, and if anyone wants to get involved and, and create this community with me, I'm, I'm quite happy to get involved. I, I love kind of learning from other people. I know that the Dutch Federation did a couple of seasons ago, they did photo of the week where they invited um, people to, to submit photos um, like, by Twitter with a, with a hashtag. And that created a, a nice kind of um, community spirit around baseball and around photography. So that might be something that could be worth, um, worth exploring if, if there was interest. So. Oh, I think we could as, as a British baseball community. I'm pretty sure we could get that sorted on the game day. Yeah, yeah. If we if we all agree a hashtag and uh, and then and then sort of like see what images get produced around the country. Um, yeah. Uh, each week. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And uh, one from your old uh, roommate Andy Brown. I'm sure you'll be getting <laughs> already. <laughs> um, best moment photographing Team GB and what's from your favourite photos. Uh, well, I think we've probably talked about my favourite photos. These are yeah, the, the ones we've just shared and, and talked about were are kind of the ones which I think tell some of the big stories over the last 10 years or so. And I don't know, it's hard picking out moments. I don't, I, it's corny, but the whole experience and getting involved with GB, it, it all came about when I was going through a pretty tough time. Um dealing with a lot of difficult things. And all of a sudden, in that September back in 2016, I had all this positive energy around me, you know, all these, the, the staff and the players, and I had an opportunity to be creative and um, appreciated and, and, and see people seeing value in, in my contribution to, to what I could do. And it, it kind of happened just at the right time for me personally and um i'll always be thankful to for, to gb for helping me at that time and um and it growing to be something that, that's kind of like really really important to me to be part of the program and i'm glad that i'm given this opportunity to help tell some of the stories that the that we're, that we're going through on, on the baseball field so yeah definitely i mean some of the stuff that you've you've shown like the emotion of the game yeah, the action. Yeah. You know, it definitely has those that you, you can follow along on on watching the stuff on YouTube, but yeah, you're just restricted by certain camera angles. Yeah, or in yeah. some cases, you're just reading the game yeah. on a website and then just being able to see certain moments brought yeah. to life by by your imagery has yeah. just been incredible. Yeah, it's been so much uh, so much fun, and like like everyone you've spoken to from GB, you know everyone talks about the people and it's such such a good group and uh yeah i'm really proud and happy to be just playing my little part in 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 uh in the program yeah lovely it's uh, paul it's it's the end of the the, uh, the show and it's tradition for the guests to get the final word so uh, anything you want to say before we leave or, mm. or where we can we also can we find your work as well um, well, basically, I, 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 my my company name for my photography side of things is Hotshot Photo, so that's pretty much easy to find on on most of the the channels. We can leave some links, but obviously, you know, the, the month ahead or the two months ahead uh, are going to be the biggest for Great Britain baseball, uh, probably in in the history. It's going to be a massive tournament. There's a lot of interest in it. 
I am not protective over my images at all. We're not as a program, you know, um, protective over these images. If if you're a content creator and you need content and you need images, reach out to me. You know, we can't use everything I produce. So if we can recirculate different angles, different shots, if you if you need a player, if you're doing a profile on a player, reach out to me. We can share this content with you because you know you can help us tell the story that we're that that's going to be told whatever that story is going to be um yeah you can help us and if you need content then i'm i'm more than happy to uh, to share that if that if that helps your channel your blog your video whatever yeah well so, lovely well lovely gesture that's yeah. fantastic yeah. paul nice yeah. one Right, well, I'll leave all the links in the show notes and how people can get in touch with you and your website and your your social medias. Uh, Paul, it's been lovely having you on. Thank you for sharing your stories. Yeah, and it's, been, it's, been, it's been fun. Um, yeah, and I hope everyone can get to see the image that we talked about. So, uh, yeah, it brings, it brings them to life a little bit. So. Definitely. I'll do my best on that one. Uh, Paul, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. And uh, have a great time over in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's going to be fun. No